everyone Matt here so we're out on another glorious day how about long lining Kodiak so we're just on a little day trip out here we've already set uh, three sets out got one more to go a couple of shorties around rock piles and uh, yeah hopefully we catch some good fish today don't have a whole lot of halibut left to finish up so yeah, fingers crossed we just have a decent day and get wrapped up today. That's up there in the cabin. Let's go see what he's up to. So, just telling the folks how, uh, how we're nearly done here. Hopefully just today and tomorrow tops. Yeah, so we're just fishing close to home on this go around. Um, we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll yeah. run back down the line a ways in a day or two if it's a little slow up here. These are all new places um, we've never fished before, so we're just checking out some new spots. We do, um, just kind of running some bottom right now. Yeah, last time we were out here it was decent fishing and uh, we had kind of sub-quality bait. <laughs> it was a little bit uh, stale in my opinion, so got some nice fresh bait today. See how it fishes, see how we do. Yeah. Hopefully it makes a difference. So yeah, I'm just running a little bit of bottom here, trying to get us on some good structure, kind of some stuff like that, some hard, rough, jaggy kind of bottom. I'm probably gonna shoot this one in like I don't know, 10 to 20. I'm just looking at it here on my chart. So We've Got switched. A nice spike there. Yeah, we switched our program to the uh, bathymetry model, and it's really nice. Um, you can see just the 3D shading on here, and this is just what the computer is generating based on the depths of the program. Um, this is what a guy would normally see right here on just a regular chart, and then if you go into the fishing mode, which 3D renders it you can start to kind of see what it looks like, but this is just the computer grabbing the data off the chart and averaging it out. The reality is like all these spots like this is places that we've run over and there's deep places and there's shallow places. And so it's really quite interesting. And then you can even go into a, a 3D cube profile like this, which really helps you visualize things. So. So this is actually rewriting the bottom right here, like the swath that we just did. So it starts to give you a really good idea of what the bottom does look like. So we're gonna make a couple of passes through here and if we like what we see, then we're gonna dump some gear out. All right guys, so we'll set you up here. We're gonna throw this set out. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed, get some good power. 32 or something like that. Now we wait. Got that last set out. A handful of hooks left. So, 
chill out for uh, another hour and a half. I think we'll probably start hauling around 2 o'clock, 2.30, somewhere in there. Should have about four and a half or five hours soak time on our first set. And so, should be pretty good. Someone was asking about how we, uh, how our level wind here works, so I guess I'll show you guys real quick. So we, what we have here is just like a, I guess kind of like a carriage. This uh, level one pulley here just registers on it. It's got a couple of bolts here. We used to have to remove this when we'd set, but since we rearranged, exactly. Be up close here. Oh. So it's just held in by a couple of uh, bolts like I showed you. Got some UHMW surrounding it for a slippery sliding on this carriage here. On the back side of it, it's got just a registration slot. And that corresponds to this chain here with a little, uh, I guess kind of a little disc. Slides into that slot on the back side. And as the chain turns on these gears here, or on these sprockets, um, it just brings it around each side. So that little disc on the chain just makes a circuit like that, pulling the, uh, the level wind back and forth like that. When it hits the end, the, uh, the disc just turns the corner, and so it brings the uh, uh, level one pull you back the other way and that's all operated by a little uh, hydraulic motor here goes over to this check valve or not check valve sorry uh, flow valve here it's just set to this uh, speed it's uh, pretty pretty ideal for this setup I guess and uh, what else do we got here so these are the supply and return. So coming from the valve over there, it's just a regular old spool valve. This is in and it doesn't actually go out. So just in for, for our setup here. We turn that in, sends fluid through this line here, through the motor, which turns the gear drive, which turns, this, t turns the reel comes back out through this hose, through here, into the uh, flow valve, and operates the level wind. After that, it comes back through the EX port here, and back to tank. So, that's how that works. Pretty simple, straightforward, and haven't had a single problem with it, which is pretty nice. Probably uh, over 10 years ago, we had this chem drive uh, torn apart. Um, the output shaft actually went straight through the whole reel. Um, we retrofitted it to have just a stub shaft here so that we can put this little love joy in there and that way the uh, motor misalignment wasn't an issue for us. Uh, I guess it's probably season before last. We had some love joy issues uh, basically just snapping off the uh, the Lovejoy, the brand name Lovejoy, just because uh, shock load on our reel a few times. Um, it's actually kind of funny because we went several seasons without having a single issue and then we end up snapping off uh, two Lovejoys in one season, which was just very odd. No, no uh, specific reason. We just pulled very lightly one time and it broke. And so we ended up getting a couple of these uh, Boston gears, I think they're called. And uh, it's just a solid piece of metal. Dad has more info on it, here he comes. Just showing uh, folks our, our uh, system here. These are Boston gears, right? Yep, Boston gear. So this is actually solid steel um, stock, as opposed to Lovejoy's that are sintered metal, which is basically powdered metal that is put into a mold and then compressed under you know extreme pressure and heat to make a solid part um, pretty tough but not very good at absorbing shock load 
Yeah, and it's so weird because we put that new one on there and I was telling them it just like we, we hung up one time on it and barely pulled and it broke. Yep. And it's so odd that after many, many seasons of not having a single issue pulling on plenty of snags, mm -hmm. it, it had no issues until it just did. <laughs> yep. So. so no problem with these guys. I mean, these will not break. Yeah. Uh, you'll probably share the the keyway or well I mean realistically the line will break first yeah um, now. yeah and that's the most ideal situation here because yeah. then you're not down your gears not down for the count you just run to the other end of your line and start hauling again yeah if anything were to fail in here I doubt it would be the keyway or the shaft would probably be the gears in here yeah would get damage first but uh, yeah and speaking of which this is the engagement uh, basically just has like a I guess a, a yoke wheel. yep has a yoke that slides a, a solid gear in and out of a, of a tooth thing we should like show yeah. them that someday but so it's, uh, um, yeah it's a yoke that so this lines the gear on here is is blind and then uh it's matching on the gear that runs this chain drive that is in this gearbox and so there's a gap between the two they almost touch and then there's a sleeve that has internal teeth on the inside that the yeah. yoke controls and so it the pushes handle it is over out here you push to join it in the two. yep so it's a pretty cool bulletproof system i think it's, it's never tough, failed yeah. us so these have been these are old old school you can't get them anymore just uh used ones they don't actually produce them anymore yeah but very very robust yeah so pretty pretty good system anyways i think it's been good to us so yeah i just want to share that with you guys like i was saying we had this uh drive shaft redone on this reel once uh put these pillow blocks in ran a solid piece of stainless shaft through the whole thing and yeah it's been it's been a good unit it's nice and smooth pull it out by hand our old one was like it was a bear sometimes when I'm pulling out buoy line it, it was actually really really hard to pull it all out like you actually had to use the drag of the buoy and the line to <laughs> to help you pull out your buoy line so it's really nice that this just goes free now. That's a good free build. So anyways, uh, just go chill out here for a bit and bring you guys back in a bit. All right, so my between or a soak time chores, I guess, is getting the bait for bait and back all chopped up. So just got some octopus here from one of our last trips. Threw it in the freezer, got frozen, makes it nice and easy to chop up. Little bite size pieces, hook size pieces. Don't bother with the very end because it's just like winds around your line and stuff. It's annoying. So I got some octopus here. Got some uh, pollock and got some salmon. So, let's get these all chopped up, then they're just ready to go. As we're hauling back, I'm back here baiting back up. So, works pretty good. Some pollock here. These are nice, these are nice pollock. Sometimes you get the big jumbos and they're just like really hard to bait. Hard to chop, got to chop through the big spine, but these little pollock work great. So these thawed out a couple of days ago, so they're a little bit floppy. Ideally, they're, they got a little more crisp to them when I'm getting around to them, but it's all right.
things actually are uh, best if you can cut them when they're frozen. But like I said, it's fine. Let's get them chopped up here. I like to trim off the tail. And the same thing, just this big gets in the way and I don't find that. Fish is very good. Too big on the hook, so. Just chop that off, trim it off. Also have some squid in the freezer. I pre-chopped and as we're hauling back, I just grab a handful out of there. They're easier to use when they're frozen still for sure. They don't get all small and floppy and actually get lost in the gurry pool of uh, juices here. This octopus works pretty good. You can actually fish it through two soaks. Stays on the hook good and puts out a lot of scent. We let it marinate on deck for a day or two before we actually freeze it. But get, get a little, uh, I guess more scented. <laughs> So sometimes get asked why we don't use the, uh, the guts from the halibut as bait. Uh, that's just because it's uh, not really viable. You can pretty much probably bait the stomach and it might stay on your hook, but everything else just would just tear off soon after you set it. And it's, that is just a big pain to deal with. That's why we don't use the gut sacks for bait. I think Pollock is 65 cents a pound and the, uh, the pinks are 75 a pound. So not cheap, but you know, cost efficient. Use about 100, eh, probably about 150 pounds of bait a day, so. Do the math. That's with our setup, which is around, I think we're around a thousand hooks a day. But. Alright folks, so we'll continue on here, get the rest of this chopped up and go and chill for a bit. Alrighty folks, we're gonna haul our line. Here we go. 
go. guys before we get into the action do us a favor leave a like down below hit the subscribe button we really appreciate it questions comments drop us a line down below let us know what you think baby scallop. Excitement from you, that's a nice fish. Yeah. Two nice fish. Let's have two more of those. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What I'm talking about.
three fish, Dad. Not the best, but hey, three fish. Well, definitely hoping for more than that, but at least they're nice. Sets down that way a little bit. Some shallower, so fingers crossed. Maybe yeah, there'll be some nice fish there. Sit along a kind of rocky reef. Got some kelp there. I think most of it's in the mid 20s, which is kind of where we got these fish, and then it shallows up into even like uh, 12 fathoms at the very end. So. Pretty rocky and rough right there. Hopefully there'll be a couple of big belly scratchers in there. Right, Matt? Right. Hey, at least we didn't get skunked. That's right. <laughs> this time. Hopefully two per tub. There we go. Two nice ones. Yeah.
Ain't bad, that's like 40s. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Might be a keeper though. All right, a little spur to hell of it. nicer for checking the depth right there. Yeah. It's snaggy down there, guys. Feel it. Feel it pulling in the rocks. that stuff brought on board but sometimes you can't. It comes up in a wad mixed in with our line and the end right here that's one thing we'll pull it on and we'll dispose of it. But if it's still attached to something down there it can be really dangerous trying to get it. Especially if it's something like a dungee pot where the stainless wire has rotted away. Yeah. A stab of, your hands and stuff. Yeah, and even just regular steel pots, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of bad gags and bars on them. Yep. Yeah. So, maybe we weren't on rocky bottom, just snagging on that line. I don't feel anything now. Back to the halibut. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice streak you were on. <laughs> 